this side is where this is growing as we getting, are getting more and more tents. This is the overflow. Most of the tents are in Tent City, which is directly behind us. Um, in that corner right there, the far corner, we have our food tent and our comfort table, which is where we collect all food and serve food to anyone who needs it all day long. The About how many meals do you think they're serving? We serve three meals a day. The last number I heard was we were um, feeding up to a thousand people. Oh my gosh. Um, the homeless community has really, we, there was a big homeless community who resided here before we came, um, but they have heard that we give food out all day long, so they've been coming and we've been working really hard to not deny anyone. And then we have guests sometimes who come and serve food. That's not our food table, that's just a guest. Way back there is the food table. We also have our, our comfort distribution warehouse over there, so when people donate sleeping bags and tents and stuff, they put it back there and we give it out to whoever needs it. Um, protesters and again the homeless community should we have you know anything available. So you had to kind of organize how things are accepted as well, right? Like you can't just have them drop it all off. And... Yeah, we decided the best way to do it was um, depending on what your donation was, people generally come to the information table to find out where to put it and we just send them directly there so there's no backlog and there's nothing gets lost and it's just best to be the one who hands your donation specifically to the person who handles it so there's no like middleman. Um, you can also see right there that Blue Turf is our sanitation. So they um, control, they try to do their best to keep the area clean, change the garbage cans, sweep. They also need a lot of recycling. So there's signs everywhere on what you can recycle. Um, next to the sanitation place in that white tub is our safety and they safety and security. And they work a lot with the de-escalation of issues. So they put on de-escalation trainings. Um, they certainly, you know, if there's a huge emergency or something major happens, we do still call the police. We do also have police here, but they handle a lot of our, you know, if it's just somebody who needs to calm down. They also help us with um, deciding our protocol for marches. And, you know, how, how did all of these people know to do this? Was there some central organizing body that, that said we need this and we need this? Or no, did people just start to volunteer? No, yeah, people just came. Just I mean, for example, the information table was started by Stan, who just decided we needed information. So he just put it together. And same with all of the other committees. We have a medic tent, um, and they were just people who decided that this would be something that should be here on a more sustainable level, so let's start it. Um, and then after the human needs, so like food, um, safety, and security, um, comfort, and sanitation, we also have a variety of other working groups that handle different areas. So we have a direct action group that handles our marches and our external actions. We have a variety of outreach organizations that help us reach out to the farther commu communities who can't necessarily always be here, but they're definitely part of the 99%, so we need to get them on board. Wow. Um, what else do we have? Are they, here, are they here tonight, that outreach group? There's a bunch of them, yeah. So it depends on who you want to talk to, but we can try and find a place for you to connect with them. Great. We also have a message working committee that is um, right now working on collecting surveys and surveying whoever walks by on what they think the specific areas of focus should be so that hopefully we can kind of like focus ourselves. Um, though we're really comfortable right now with being a leaderless um, peaceful assembly and really reveling in like that celebratory nature of like coming together and like finding a group of people who also feel that the system is broken and needs to be changed. Um, we have a facilitation committee that handles our GAs as far as just like running it. They don't control it, they're not in charge. But they run it. GAs? Oh, General Assembly. General Assemblies. Okay. Um, and we have a um, finance working group which handles all of our donations. We get a lot of monetary donations. Um, I think that's it. So if someone decides that they want to start a group or do a thing, the General Assembly is where that's discussed and someone yeah. says, okay, here's here are the parameters or this is what would be yeah, best for like, us. In order to speak at General Assembly, yeah, we have people who take stack, okay. which is they have a piece of paper and if you want to speak, you need to get your name on that list okay. and then that's how we order who's speaking when. We also have points of consensus or uh, um, points of clarification so you can at any time raise your hand and get a point of clarification. We have a question and answer period and then we have voting processes. Those that you really do need to go to facilitators to get a better idea of how that works. Right. Um, we have two general assemblies a day, one at noon and one at seven. The one at noon has grown more into what we call occupation camp assembly. And it's more of an open mic, whereas our seven o'clock assembly is where we, for example, last two nights ago, 
we went point by point through a letter that we were going to send to the city. So we All voted right. on talking points and how that was going to be ordered and what we felt needed to be More said. More of a business meeting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess. This is really interesting because for me it it's looks like a kind of a microcosm of how this whole organization may begin to shake shape from yeah. something that lacks focus to something that has specific agenda points. Yeah, and we're also really committed to, we don't know if this will be the case, but our mindset is that this will be an indefinite occupation and we're moving forward in all of those like, with that in mind. So we're trying to set it up so that it's sustainable so that like, I mean, it can continue on for months because we have a medic tent. We even have a we have media tent that handles journalists and that kind of thing and putting out media from here. We have a tech tent that updates all of our social networking sites. We have an internal communications group that helps all the working groups communicate a little bit better. Um, and it's 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 an imperfect system and a lot of times being a volunteer at the information, we don't always have the answer to your question because um, it is so organized that people expect it to be almost like flawless, like it would be at a corporate, you know, but we're, it's not like that. We're all volunteers, we come and we can, things get lost, we don't have, we have a, we don't have a filing system really, so, you know, there's definitely imperfections, but, um, sorry, I don't want to throw that on the ground. Um, so, let me think of what else, we have a donations and resources group. Oh, we also have a new working committee that's, um, it's sort of like, it's called the Elevation Project or the Homeless, homeless Outreach Project. We get a lot of, the homeless community is really, really present in this assembly. Um, and with that comes a lot of uh, other issues that you need to deal with that you're not always trained to deal with. And we are not in the position right now of ever turning people away. But, you know, with the homeless community comes um, maybe a, a wider breadth of, of mental health issues and you need someone who's trained to be able to, to help out with that or maybe... Um, there's also kind of a lot of um, um, substance addiction issues that, and that's not just with the homeless community too. I mean, this is a huge assembly, so those are things that we need assistance with dealing with. Um, we have a family space that um, deals with people who have kids who want to be here. So everyone who has a kid goes to the family space and gets their contact information on the child, and the child's required to have contact information on them in case something happens and you get separated. Um, we have a legal working group that helps us determine kind of where we stand within the law and at what points are we going to go outside of the law and what we need to do then. Um, How long have you guys been here? Today is the 14th day. 14th. 14th day. Um, and a above our legal working group, we have our legal um, observers, and they are volunteers from the ACLU, the National Lawyers Guild, and then, you know, a bunch of solo practitioners. Um, are who have volunteered to help us address so like we have a legal hotline in case you ever get arrested have that number and then you can call them and they'll help you out um, and we haven't had any issues with that we've been um, so far the police have been very respectful of our right to assemble um, that's sort of been calling it been called into question lately like one of our one of the people I guess one of the larger detractors of this movement or the criticisms of this movement so far has been that about eighty thousand dollars a week, I guess, to have the police be here in taxpayer money. Um, and our stance is that so far we've been completely peaceful, and there hasn't been a, a single need for them. And so we sort of reject that presence as necessary. Um, we have a oh, the, one of the bigger ones. We have a library um, and an education working group, so they handle um, t a lot of teach-ins. So we have a variety of teach-ins, everything from very specific things like. You know, teaching on the rise of corporations or how to take your money out of a bank and find a credit union. Um, I attended a nonviolence training, which was part um, like action, like how do you engage in a nonviolence movement that's being attacked outward from with aggression. It was also a brief lesson on nonviolent movements throughout the history and the theory of nonviolence and how that works. Um, so we and we we're getting more and more educations. We even did a, a compost how to thing. So really, whatever people want to bring to this space, they're allowed to bring it as long as they organize it either within the framework that exists or start their own working group if that doesn't exist and do it on their own. So um, it's definitely leaderless. Yeah. Thank you.